Welcome to Think Tank. <laughs> <laughs> after all the doom and gloom, after the loss at Kings Park against Argentina, we thought we'd over-celebrate the win at Buenos Aires. South Africa back on top. World champions about to happen, I'm sure. Where's the cake and jelly? Yeah, that is a good question. We couldn't even get coffee on the show. Who are the All Blacks? Uh, I think it's a team from New Zealand. Can they put 40 past <laughs> Australia? Of course they can. <laughs> Not to worry. Boxer in. Boxer in at a canter. Look, it's a bit of an, an exaggeration, but it was a good win against Argentina and a, and a great performance considering uh, the pressure, you know, in the build-up to that, to that match after the loss at, uh, at Kings Park. Yeah, you just wish that the box always had a firecracker up their asses hey, or, or always had their backs to the wall. But most importantly, that they always had a fair referee. Yeah. Um, I know we're a country that moans about the referee, and it's a little bit sad that we are, are known as whingers, but my word. I think it pointed out to the fact that Poet really had a shocker last week. It was mm. hideous. It was really, really terrible. Look, the box were worse, um, but he was terrible. And, uh, you know, it just, just from having a fair sort of shot at, 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 at scrummaging and a fair shot at, uh, at, 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 at general refereeing, decisions yeah you know the box were in the game yeah and tactically also they returned to that percentage style of play there was a lot less ball in hand stuff they became a lot more efficient on attack because they were kicking more kicked three times as much as they had in Durban they did got the result and you know it was almost identical to what the All Blacks did I mean the first 15 18 minutes of that All Black game no one knew what was what the hell was happening yeah. you know they were kicking for position yeah. uh, for territory and you know Lambie clearly had that brief and then uh, yeah that was his call and he did it expertly yeah. you know he really did very very well i think you know uh, just speaking to lambie uh, it's a little bit like vincent koch I, I do feel a little bit like those guys have got the rub of the green slightly yeah um well well no more so could say rather than, yeah. than vincent koch yeah. you know myself on a mava uh, myself on a mava well i'll eventually get there, <laughs> <I'm myself laughs> in, there <somewhere. laughs> um, in that you know, there was no Asheza, really. yeah. <laughs> and that oak is a man yeah, beast. Yeah, he you know, he's, he's without doubt the strongest loose head in, in, in the world. Yeah. Um, they had a referee who was at least giving uh, parity. Um, and then, of course, you know, Lambie had that base to work from. Right. And, you know, as you rightly point out, he'd been given the brief to, to play in the other half, whereas Pollard was probably asked to, to, to take it up a lot more. So let's, let's, let's appreciate the performances from both Van Amerva and Lambie. But let's also know that both Koch and Pollard are, 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 are good talents. No, 100%. Where, where does that leave us going into the World Cup? Because everyone's on the Lambie train now. Who starts at 10 in the World Cup? What are your thoughts around uh, the Lambie versus Pollard debate? Yeah, it's a tough one. I mean, it, it's truly wonderful that we've got those two guys to call on. And, you know, I'm, I'm on the Pollard train. That said, I have never, you know, this has been a long time since I've seen such a classy performance. Yeah. And that goal kicking, for me, would probably sway it. Pollard's missed a few. He's been a little bit iffy in that department. Yeah. And, you know, maybe, you know, Pollard with, with 30 to go, after we've done the damage with uh, playing in opposition territory, bring on a fly off who can, who can go to the gain line, bring the centres into the game. Yep. Perhaps that's the way forward. You spoke about goal kicking. We saw the value of that tactical game in Buenos Aires. Is there anybody better suited to fly off than Mornay Stan? And before you answer that question, it brings us to the question of the week from my rugby blog. The man wants to know, is there a place for France and Mornay Stain? Uh, in the World Cup squad because they haven't played any rugby this year? Short answer, no. <laughs> but we'd love a long answer <laughs> on uh, things. Bring like. <laughs> no, I think, I mean, I mean, perhaps to the point then, who of the of the four or five players who haven't played a stitch of rugby yeah. is, is Maya going to rely on? And uh, it's, Okay, so we've seen what he's going to do. He's going back to the, the, the more territory-based game. He's right. going to ask a fly off to, to kick a little bit more or a lot more. Uh, and, 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 you know, perhaps embrace ball in hand in, in, in opposition half. Yep. I, I think there's only space for two players, and that is Farid Pri, because we've seen, you know, he comes back from a lengthy layoff and he makes an instant difference. And quite clearly he hasn't played a lot, he hasn't given Reinach a lot of uh, game time, yep. so he quite clearly sees that as, as an option. So I think he'll, he'll, he'll rely on that, and I think he's going to go, he'll, he'll wait for Dwayne Vermeulen, which means that, and he's only ready in, in third game of the World Cup, right. which means Skalk will have to play eight, uh, and there'll be some ramifications there. But yeah, I wouldn't, I think Franz Stein is gone, Mornay Stein is gone, I wouldn't risk Jean de Villiers. Um, Matfield is playing, so, so you know, I think he'll, he'll stick with Matfield, and he, he is adding value. But guys, Crocs, who are going to come back and, and be risked, so to speak, only Friedrich Pri and, and Dwayne Vermeulen. You spoke about Dwayne. Willem Alberts came back into the side last week. I thought he added some impetus with ball in hand. Just what, what are your thoughts on the value that he added to the, to the performance? Yeah, I thought he was quiet. Um, he, you know, long layoff, rusty, you can understand. Uh, second half, he came into it. Uh, and, 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 you know, it, it definitely is a big uh, 
sort of role that makes Mayer's game plan work. Yeah. You know, a big and and and, and a, a big charging ball carrying seven. Yeah. And I thought Brousseau was fantastic because it was a better balanced loose trio. So right. you had your seven who was the carrier, you uh, had eight. And Skulk is improving as an eight, as a more linking kind of eight. Yeah. And then Brousseau was like almost as good as Francois Lowe, or perhaps, you know, as good as Francois Lowe. Yeah. And so that's going to be another big conundrum for, for Mayer. I mean, what does he do there? Yeah. Um, you know, for me, you, you've got to play with a fetcher. And so Lowe is off, off fetcher, but what happens if he gets injured or if he needs a rest? So Brousseau, I think, might have played his way into the into the side, but is it at the expense of of of, of Marcel Coutier. Oh, Van Alves, yeah. Uh, what are your thoughts on Marcel Coutier in that in that race for the number six jersey? Well, I think he loses. Uh, you know, there was a huge amount of debate about Casatu and their you know and their claims last week. But so how it'll influence Mayer's selection is going to be interesting. But in one instance here in the loose forward, Siakilis is going to have to go. He hasn't played a lot of rugby. Um, he, he wasn't in the best of form for 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 the Stormers. But either uh, Pomahoje or, or, or Siakilis is is going to go to the World Cup. And then that, you know, I, I think will have ramifications. It's, it might be an Alberts or Brousseau decision, or you might go with uh, Peter Steff as a lock who, who then covers on, on loose forward. So, yeah, we'll have to see how that one pans out. Nice one, Tank. That's it for this week, guys. Thanks very much for tuning in to Think Tank. Please be sure to keep watching the show and send in your questions using the hashtag Think Tank. And uh, stick with us as we go forward and we start chatting about uh, the build-up to the World Cup. Until next time, ciao.